I hope you know I'm a big softie for sewing-based charities, and rarescience.org is by far one of my favorites. I've been creating these awesome rare bears for children with rare diseases the last year, and I'm having a blast. And today, I'm going to teach you how to make your very own. Let's get started. We want you, that's right, to join our rare bear army. So follow our description in the link below. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave that one in. <laughs> we want you to join our Rare Bear Army. That's right. Go ahead and just bounce into the description below. We've got a link for you to take you to rarescience.org where you sign up to join the Rare Bear Army. And from there, they'll guide you through the steps to get the pattern from Simplicity. They'll send you a couple of the feet that you need. They'll send you the little uh, rare bear tag, as well as it will also have its custom and unique serial number, so that way we can track the bear as it goes to live with its new family, that child with its rare disease. And I also want to pick some really fun kid-related fabric, so I used Wyndham's The Big Dig. It's this great construction fabric. And I got a fat quarter bundle, and so I used some of the fabrics to create this bear, and I'll have other fabrics left over to create other bears, so I can keep sending them in. and. Speaking of making those bears, let's get you started on how we're gonna do this in the tutorial, right? So when you sign up at rarescience.org, they're gonna send you a PDF set of instructions that cover a couple of different steps than the original pattern for getting that tag in place. So do follow those instructions while you're working, but you'll still be using, as you can see, the pattern pieces from the actual simplicity pattern itself. And we're gonna start by making the head of the bear. There's got a couple challenging things I wanna walk you through. I shouldn't say challenging, just things I wanna feel important about, right? So we're gonna start on the face part and we're gonna follow and we're gonna just stitch this seam and all of our seams, this is kind of the nose here, all of our seams are gonna be made with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I've already got an edge guide on my machine. But I am using polyester threads because I want you to have clean, unused, fresh fabrics, that's one of the requirements, please. And we also wanna make sure we w construct these very well and very safe and secure. So I am using a polyester thread. Polyester is just a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna back stitch on all my seams with that quarter inch. And I'm just using that edge guide to help me make it around that curve nice. And then one of the things we do a lot of times in soft toys is we want to clip all of our curves, also in garment, right? So clipping the curves means I'm going to go ahead and just come in here about every quarter inch and I'm going to use my scissors to cut almost all the way back to the threads. And I've already pressed one of these pieces out. I've got a lot of this stuff ready made so I can get you through the, all the steps quickly because we're going to make the entire bear in today's tutorial. So you can see that I had clipped those edges there nice so that when I pressed it back right sides out, I got a nice curve going there. The next part we're gonna need to do actually though, is we're gonna take this one piece that is the center of the nose or the center of the bear's face. Every piece in the pattern has two, except for just this one. And we're going to go ahead and set it in right sides together, starting at this top and all the way around the corner. So I'm gonna set it in here like this, right sides together and head on over to my sewing machine. I wanna make sure I have that right. So I come around the nose, yep. And we're just gonna go ahead and stitch this part. Just gradually let these curves come together, going a little bit slower. And then I'm also trying to line up the center of that seam with the center of where the curve is on the nose piece that's going in, just so I know it's coming in fairly symmetrically. And then back stitch there to finish. And we've already started to create that whole front piece where we're gonna go ahead and set in the ears next. Now, like I said, I've gotten a bunch of work done for us. So I wanna show you where we're heading. And that is, that nose is back in. And when we flip it over here like this, so you can see the right sides, let me turn it. Here's our ears. Now. The entire bear will be stuffed, and actually Rare Science, or the Rare Bear Army, prefers you send your bears in unstuffed, and they'll stuff them and seal them up for you, but the ears we have to stuff ourselves. So you have four of these half circle shapes. You're gonna go ahead and just sew all the way around the circle part, leaving this open here. 
You'll snip those edges. I won't take the time to now, but you'll snip them yourselves. Turn it right sides out like yay. And then just take yourself a little pinch of your polyfill, fluff it up a bit, and you're gonna stick that in to your ear. And you're gonna go back over to the sewing machine and you're gonna sew just the lightest little seam, real narrow little seam here. You can see it right here. And that's just to hold the stuffing in while we do the rest of the head construction and the ear construction. Those ears, both of them are pinned about an inch away from the center line down that um, nose piece there. There's that nose piece, okay? And then the next thing we need to do, now that we have these pinned in place, is create the back of the head. And the back of the head here is created, and this is a piece that's kind of symmetrical looking. So you can see I've left it pinned in place. It says that this is the center seam. This is the seam we'll stitch, okay? So you can see that I've actually already prepared that so that I would know this goes over to the sewing machine this way. But like I said, <laughs> this is the one I've already prepared for us. And it's been stitched along here like yay. And then all we're gonna go ahead and do is turn it right sides back out as we need. And we're going to prepare to find, this is the curve here is where the neck opening is. So this top round part is the top of the head. So I'm gonna come back down here I'm trying to hold it still, but there's a curved opening there. So I'm just gonna match those up like this, and I'm gonna go up and around the outside of the head. And I'm gonna go nice and slow as I get near those ears. I have a few pins in place. I'm gonna back stitch every time I can. Now, if you wanted to do some embroidery on the eyes or nose, this would be a great time to do it before we put this back on. I simply did without any character on the eyes or nose because I think it's fun that way. We do not want you sewing buttons on for safety reasons. I've just captured that one ear as I came around. Preparing to capture the second one. And I'm making sure that that thread that's holding the stuffing in the ears will not be showing up as I finish that seam there. Okay, and so now you can see that it's come all the way around like yay, and basically I can turn it right sides back out to check my construction. Careful, because you did have those pins in place to hold those ears, and here comes my little teddy bear face. Pretty awesome, right? We're gonna do the limbs and the body all kind of as one unit, so we're just gonna set this head aside for a little bit, and you're gonna have two parts, and this is where it gets really fun to mix your fabrics up. That was why I loved having that fat quarter bundle, and there is going to be a opening on the back of each arm and on the back of each leg where we will have these stuffed at Rare, Rare Bear. The Rare Bear Army will do that for us. So I want to leave an opening here and sew all the way around the perimeter. And then of course it'll be pressed right sides out like you can see it. There's that opening. So the arms are very, very simple. And the legs are pretty darn simple as well. Here's a finished leg and it has the foot in there. I'm going to teach you how to put the foot in. And we also have that opening in the back there where we will be able to stuff these once these are in place. So the first step in getting the foot constructed is to basically build its leg. And this is all fabric laying nice and flat, easy to go, right sides together. There's that opening, you can see that nicely. Now, what happens is these are pre-printed from Spoonflower, this little rare science there. And what you'll notice is we have just barely enough room for our pattern piece to fit on there. It's okay, we just need to make a little oval. So you can see there's my pattern piece. And one of the things I like to do is make sure the word rare science is pointing up. So that's gonna be the tip of my toe. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go right sides together into that opening, lining it up. And then I'm gonna come right to the sewing machine and I'm gonna position this so I'm looking at the paw, or the pad of the foot, and I've got my eyes blind to the actual printed fabric, the construction fabric, so that I can follow the seam around. 
and the pattern pieces are cut perfectly to size, so as long as we don't tug or push too much on any one of these two layers of fabric, it should come nicely right back around to the center for us. But if you have to cheat a little bit, you can. It's the benefit of these cute, cuddly, little stuffed projects, is people don't know if we have a little seam that's got a little pucker or something in it. Okay, and you can see how nicely this is coming back around. It really is simple, but I just felt like this might be a new set of construction for somebody at home, so I wanted to take a minute and show this. Okay, I'm coming around, and here I am nice, right back where I started from. So let's lock those stitches in really tight. And again, at this point, I want you to go ahead and take the time to snip those curves, but I want to get this bare constructed, so I'm just going to turn it right sides back out because we're going to need all of our arms and our legs right sides out from this point on. Okay, so I have two legs constructed, two arms constructed, and one of the things I like to do is I like to take this and pinch it so that the feet are sitting in here correct. The first time I made a bear, I put the feet in wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take this here, and I'm going to come down to my iron, and I'm going to just press this to create a seam so that when I set it in to the back piece of the body, I've got it ready to go. So let's do that on this leg too. Okay, nice and easy. So we've got legs. Turn this arm right side out for us. You can use either opening, really, at this point. Okay. Perfect, and we don't need to do any special pressing to the arms. They're going to lay in there just right. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prepare what will be the back of the bear. The back of the bear was cut. This is real important here, so let's go ahead and go nice and slow. Hopefully you can see the tag has been caught inside the seam right there in the back part about an inch and a half down for where the neck is on the bear itself. Okay, so the way I did that is I pinched it and then I did my quarter inch seam allowance, but there's also these darts at the bottom of the bear so that he has a nice flat bottom so he can sit on the, on the bed comfortably, right? So this one I've already stitched. This one I'm gonna show you on the lighter blue fabric. So the dart was cut from the pattern piece itself. All we need to do is line up these outer edges here and pinch it. And then I'm gonna use that same quarter inch seam allowance and I'm gonna come over to the machine here and I'm starting back a ways, and I'm gonna really lock these stitches in. Come forward, lock them in again. And then what that has done is it's created this really nice flat base for the back side of the bear. And at that point, we can go ahead and pin our legs in. So the easiest way to do this for you all to see at home is here's gonna be my legs. And I want to go ahead and pin them in just slightly over that dart seam. Again, with about a two inch opening here. And I am pinning the back of the calf of the leg, right, to the bottom or the back. So that the toes are pointing forward, toes are pointing forward is what I'm trying to say. And I've got those pins out of the way of where I'm going to sew later. We do still need to go ahead and construct the front of the bear as well. So it'll also show you which seam on the pattern piece they want you to go ahead and stitch. So I often will leave my pattern pieces there. And this one you can see I have also stitched and I've clipped the edges. So this thing is ready to go back in right sides together with the back because the legs are in. We'll put the arms in once the front and the back of the bear are connected. So at this point, sometimes it's nice to go ahead and tuck those feet in like this. Look for the neck of the bear. Go right sides together again. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start at the top here. Lock that seam in. Make sure you're not accidentally stitching parts of the leg anywhere you don't want it. We're going to come, come here, and as I approach that corner, I'm just getting ready. I've got my finger on the part of the leg I want, and I have a tendency just to let that straight seam kind of run straight out that corner. You're going to see it come up over the seam guide there. 
I'm still aligning the body back and the body front. I'm also trying to give a little encouragement to make sure those two center seams line up so it just looks very well constructed when it's done. Okay, now I'm getting the, the second leg. I've already stitched over the first leg. And what we're gonna do as soon as we come out of that second leg seam, we're gonna go about another half inch and we're gonna stop and we're gonna back stitch and I'm gonna cut my threads actually. What we're doing is we're gonna leave the opening that we finally turn the entire bear back out through. So I need to leave about a three finger opening in its width. Come back up here, make sure it's nice and flat still. The bigger the opening, the easier the turn. The bigger the opening, the more hand sewing you'll get to do at the end. So that's partly why I'm judging about a three finger opening and also why the legs and the arms are not stuffed before we construct. Let's lock in our thread again, because I'm on the other side of that opening. We're stitching up through here. And so far, things are going fantastically. I've got my bare body and everything going in here. Now, one of the things you may need to do is you may need to turn it back right sides out so you know where to position the arms. So let's do that. And then be careful though, there's pins in those legs. This is also a perfect time to make sure that when you flatten them down, his feet are facing forward. Please don't ask me how I know that problem. And then let's go in here and get those pins out here and here. And then this way you also know where the front of your bear is because you want to align his arms so that they're facing forward. The arms are gonna just go right over. They're gonna split the difference on that seam. And like we did with the seam for the ears, we're gonna just barely catch this right now under the machine here. Just a little seam allowance, less than that quarter inch, because I don't want it to show when the bear's finished. I'm just basically basting these arms into place right now. But I won't be removing this thread later. Okay, I'm just double checking to confirm. His arms are going correctly. Okay, just like that. So our entire bare body is done and our head is technically done as well. What we're gonna need to go ahead and do is keep our head right sides out and our body we're gonna turn back to wrong sides out. Okay, now you'll notice where those darts are. That's the back of the bear. So I'm gonna spin it so I'm facing the front of the bear I'm gonna find the nose and I'm gonna drop the head in so that the nose is facing forward. And then you're gonna have technically one, two, three, four seams around the body and four seams around the bear to line up to make sure it stays accurate. So I didn't even take the time to pin any of this and we're gonna sew all the way around because we have that opening we left down there near the legs. This is also a nice thing about having different fabrics. So I know that those two polka dot fabrics on the seam are the front. And now we're gonna make that quarter inch seam allowance here. And this sometimes feels a little tight. So just make sure you don't have any wrinkles or lots of layers folded or anything in there. And then just keep those seams kind of lining up and go around and readjust and go around. Catching those arms again. I can see I just lined up that seam really nicely. Here comes another arm. All right. And I'm gonna backstitch to secure. Okay, so now that we've finished that seam, we're just gonna go right to that little thigh seam and start to pull our parts of our bear out slowly to see our wonderful new creation here. And here it comes.
And voila, I got a leg wrapped around or something on there. There we go, <laughs> nice. So there is our bear all finished with that fantastic rare bear tag already in its back like that for us. Remember, you gotta make sure you do that so they've got a way to track it. You've got your wonderful rare bear feet there for you. So again, here is that fantastic finished bear. And just a couple of quick reminders. We would really prefer it if you just send in the bear skin so you don't need to stuff yours. We'll have it just like it is finished sewing. And please do not put any buttons on for the eyes. Those could come off and become a choking hazard and we really, really need to be careful about that. But you most certainly use some hand embroidery floss and you can embroider on some eyes or nose to even further customize your personal bear. So sign up today at rarescience.org. Join our rare bear army and put your love for sewing and crafting together and help make a bear to support some child out there that really needs you right now. Thanks again. We'll see you next time at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.